I want to introduce you to what I call fulcrum design. Uh, this is a method I have used and other people have used. I've developed with other people when uh, we made uh, some very, very big games. Uh, there was at one time, I'm going to aside just this once with a small anecdote, uh, on a, a game where we had 45 different character classes, which is a very large amount. And each one of those character classes had 45 different uh, skills, different abilities to do things. Don't ask me why 45, it was not a number I came up with, uh, but we did. And if you multiply those to each other, it comes close to 2,000 different skills. And each of those 45 characters needed to be balanced with each other. And each of those 2,000 skills needed to be written and, and coded. Uh, and even at 10 minutes each, that was over a week just to do one pass. So we could not, simply could not, physically could not uh, do all of that data work in the amount of time allotted. We just simply couldn't do it and balance each character against each other. So a method we developed on that game and I've used on many games since is called Fulcrum, where you take uh, one piece of data in our previous uh, example here. Let's say we take the orc, right? And we make him the Fulcrum. And we test the living crud out of that. We get him perfect. We spend a lot of time Way more time than we're going to be able to spend for any other character. And we get them just right so that an orc feels good and an orc feels good compared against orc. If it's a race, they race at about the same speed. If it's a fight, they fight to, to where it feels good, right? If they uh, farm, they farm to where they're both right in there and they feel the, the same and it's a balanced farming act, whatever orc farming is. But it's balanced. Uh, and then from that point, once we have our data fulcrum set, we lock it. We carve it in stone. I actually asked literally on, on one of my games if we could carve one of the characters in stone and put it on my desk, and they said no. Uh, but we do that uh, figuratively. Carve it in stone, and then every other character we make, we balance against that one character. So when I was talking about the game, I had 45 characters. Instead of 45 characters combined with each other, which we'll get to and see just how enormous that number is, uh, it was just 45 balancing, which is still a lot. But trivial compared to, to the enormity of balancing every character or every car or every spaceship against each other. Oh yeah, I already covered this. So yeah, yes. Uh, so first we design the fulcrum, balance each variant, and then we test the variant against each other. So when we have our orc and we test our orc against all other characters. The orc is balanced against all other characters. And by the nature of doing that, you will find that all of your other characters are in the realm. Even though your orc is balanced against your human and the orc is balanced against a spider, and the human and the spider have never been compared, they are within range. They will just naturally fall into that range. You may need some tweaking later on, but a vast majority of your work is already taken care of you because you've made that center and worked around it. Uh, now, doing our combinations to talk about the time saved, and this is also a useful calculation. Uh, we're, we're going to talk about what's called the handshake formula, and I want to show it graphically because it took me years to get this through my head and actually get a hold of it. So if we wanted to balance 20 characters against each other, how do we figure out how many combinations that is? This is a very common problem that we have to do as data designers. It's constantly we have to balance things against each other. Uh, so how do we figure out how many combinations that is? Or if we want to combine in crafting, how do we figure out how many combinations there are? Uh, so this is the method we use. And I'm showing you graphically on a chart that we can see 1 and 1. We don't need that because it's the same thing. It's not a new combination. 2 and 2, again, so this whole line, we don't need that. And then 2 combined with 1, 1 combined with 2, same thing. So we don't need all of this. So what we have here is the number times itself. You know, same number of rows, same number of columns, and then we subtract that number, because you can see that middle diagonal, is it's also 20, because they're 20 combinations number with themselves. So you subtract that number, and then you remove half. So if we do that mathematically, combinations is equal to the total instances squared minus the total instances divided by 2. And here's the formula. And you may say, I'm never going to use this. I guarantee you will. Uh, this is a data design thing. This is a formula. Write it down, and someday, someday soon. There are other methods to getting to this. Uh, you can add up 
uh, my 20 times plus 19 plus 18 plus 17. You can do that too. That's a different method. But this is the most compact uh, method that anything you have to combine with anything else, you can Im immediately find out uh, the number of combinations you have to deal with just by calculating this number. Uh, and this also shows you some of the importance of the data fulcrum.